Hey, mis super amigos. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Let me um, introduce Masala and Maiz. Um, I've met Norma also more than 20 years ago, and we share a common love for fashion, handmade fashion, and the love of uh, Mexican Mercados food. When Norma and Sakiba started cooking together, they lo the love that they both have for each other and the respect from their own countries and personal stories are felt in every bite. The spices they use and the flavors that we taste at Masal and Maiz reminds me of that of the Galeón de Manila, the ship that during colonial Mexico will transport spices, textiles, and ceramics from India, China, Philippines, and other Asian countries and will arrive to Acapulco, Mexico at the Pacific Ocean, cross by wagons to the Atlantic and depart from Veracruz to Europe. It's here in Mexico that all these cultural and economical exchanges of all these three continents happened. Spices and teas from Asia, cacao, sugar cane and avocados, corn from Mexico and Peru, will go to Asia and Europe. And from this continent, we will get wine, olive oil, um, among other things. So. This is the complexity of uh, <laughs> what you can have a taste. And uh, it's also filled with love and admiration for these two amazing friends. Thank you. Uh, thank uh, you so much, Carla. Thank you so much. Um, well, we are Norma Listman. Saki Kewal. From Masala Maiz. He is a Masala. I am the Maiz of the project. Um, interestingly enough, our food project started at Carla's house, at Carla and Pedro. Carla and I have been friends for a long, long time, uh, doing fashion shows in the Bay Area. Before I worked in food, I worked in fashion until I did this one project that showed me the power of food, and then I couldn't stop cooking. Yeah, we we never wanted to open a restaurant. Both of us have had tons of experience and many years working in the restaurant industry, opening restaurants for other people, working in all the positions. And it's really a terrible choice to make with your life. <laughs> um, the industry, as we know it, and as it's been run since its inception, and since its colonial inception, is rife with white supremacy, capitalism, labor violence, sexualized violence, all manners of abuse. And it's really a deeply hierarchical and problematic system and way of working so for us we were very adamant of we'll never open a restaurant and however then... we <laughs> found ourselves after, in mexico city after dinner at carla's house after dinner at carla's house um we were always working in support of each other we met in oakland california in the bay area as cooks he had a political art and food justice project. And I was doing a lot of research around the Californians and Mexicans who lived in California. And we always worked in support of each other. However, this dinner at Carla's house was the first time that him and I were able to explore us, our practice as chefs and nerds and went to the markets and realized all of the similarities and all of the connections that Carla was talking about when she introduced us and the work we do at Masale Maiz is exploring that migration of cooking techniques, ingredients and political movements between South Asia, East Africa and Mexico. My family are South Asians that migrated to East Africa, Norma, of course, from Mexico. And what we focus on and what we realized through this research is there's few cuisines in the world aside from indigenous cuisines that haven't been touched by uh, Mexican ingredients, Mexican foodways, and Mexican technique. Mexico City's food system is a food system that has impacted how the world eats. The food that has come out of Mexico, pre-colonization, post-colonization, has changed the world's food. For us, the reason we didn't want to open a restaurant was because the model is so broken. When we think about the state of the restaurant industry, we, what we see is a deeply white supremacist model that is built on the theft of craft and the theft of community knowledge to create something 
superbly capitalistic, right? Where every restaurants become kind of extractive uh, projects within a community. They don't give back. They take and they take and they kind of hold resources for a very small collective of people. However, being the dreamers that we are and thinking that we could do something different and that there is something that the future holds that it's more beautiful, um, we decided to embark on the venture of opening a restaurant and we started dreaming and we started dreaming about how this new model would look like, how the restaurant of our dreams would actually work. So a lot of what we do at Masali Maiz is um, basically focus on community and community rights and putting workers first. Our golden rule in everything we do is if it's good for the worker, it'll be good for the business. So we, for example, don't open at night. Um, we know we could make a lot more money if the restaurant would, was open for dinners but is we're stubborn and we want to prove, we have a theory of change and we want to prove that this model can happen and be successful in a capitalist world with um, labor rights, um, farmer rights, environmental rights at the forefront of what we do. A lot of our work is like Norma said, right, putting the workers at the center of our operations and their quality of life and their families at the center of our operations. So not opening for dinner means that our staff can have a life outside of work. We both worked in restaurants where you'd work until two or three in the morning and you'd have no life. And the only way that in this, again, very abusive white supremacist and colonial model of in order to get ahead, you need to basically commit yourself fully and what that looks like is destroying your everything else in your life. So we want people to have a life outside of work. We also recognize our privilege as one of the kind of famous restaurants in Mexico City. The food system, it's a large food system. When we hear about the lists and the Michelin stars and all of these th things, it's a very limited group of restaurants that encompass the larger food system. So in recognizing that privilege, we think like, what can we do? Because we know that this experience has a cost that in Mexico, not everyone can have access to. So every couple of months, we have this pay what you can meals which the first time we did it in Mexico, it's a model that we have done a lot in the Bay Area and that people have practiced with. But the first time we did it in Mexico, it was like, no, people were mad at me. They were calling me. They, they felt that there was a trick, that I was going to trick them into something. And then my friends were telling me, no seas tonta, don't, like, this is not going to work. You're going to lose money and all of these things. And, and to us, it's not about that. It's about opening the experience for a day for everyone. No questions asked. It was. It, it took a lot. A lot. A lot of time also to train our staff and to tell them it's okay. They would be coming to us and they're like, "Chef, but like it's like a what three, if nobody pays? Like or they, like they would fine. come the first times and they're like, but the check it's like three hundred dollars and they're just paying and we're like, it's okay. This is what this is about. It's our favorite day." in the restaurant because we take away um, the monetary exchange and then we're just cooking for people and we're just um, in, in service for people and with people and doing what we love the most. Yeah. We also uh, started a worker owned cooperative grocery store in collaboration with our staff. We do, uh, we produce a worker owned cooperative natural wine in, uh, in Valle de Guadalupe called Radical. That is also uh, the first worker-owned cooperative wine project in Mexico. What we look at in terms of our work is growth for us has to be from the bottom up, from the, from the roots, right? Um, Angela Davis, that was one of the leaders in the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, talked about radical simply means grasping things by the roots. 
So if we want a radical change in our industry, we need to get to the roots of the instability in our industry. And for us, the roots are always going to be the workers, the community, and quality of life. We think about craft and labor very similarly. We think about our farmers as craftspeople. We're very intentional and hyper-local about all the different choices that we make in the restaurant, from the uniforms that we design in collaboration uh, with Carla, uh, down to the salt that we use. <clears throat> Everything needs to be traceable. Everything needs to be uh, handmade and very intentionally, uh, very intentionally chosen. And sustainability for us, it's not only environmental sustainability, but cultural sustainability. What does that mean? And I love this phrase that um, I have in a dress and a t-shirt and I want it everywhere from Carla. Uh, that tradition is not static and it's how do we keep our traditions how we keep uh, the blending of our cultures um, at the beginning a lot of people called us fusion we are not fusion we are mestizaje we are a new culture being born from the mixing of other cultures Fusion, it's a white supremacist gimmick that was born in the 80s with a very capitalist view. We are not that. We are, um, what we are proposing is this exploration of new culture. And this is what you can eat in Mexico. This is Mexican gastronomy. Today, it's a blending of so many cultures that have passed through this land through centuries. So we're going to uh, round out our 20 minutes with a, a short video that was done about our work. Um, I think Norma and I can talk a lot, but it's much more important that you see and hear from the workers um, who make Masali Maiz what it is and, and who are doing this work with us. Um, and to give you a sense of what this restaurant looks like in action. So, so I'm going to share my screen here. And at the end of it, I'll put our emails and our Instagram handle in the chat box so you can stay in touch with us. Give me just a moment and I'll share the screen. Wow, I thought I thought this would be a lot easier. <laughs> Bear with us. Jesus. No? It won't let me here. You want to keep talking while I do this? <laughs> um, here. This. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are... Um, Happy to say that we have a successful restaurant, that change is possible, that um, we have introduced new practices to the to our restaurant. Um, for us, the pandemic was crucial in returning to ourselves. I feel like we started with um, all of these ideas of being radical and existing differently in a capitalist model. However, three years into having this restaurant, we found ourselves being a part, like getting lost in getting awards, um, um, being in the covers of magazines, having a busy restaurant and kind of had gotten into this uh, train of what success uh, meant and we had lost ourselves a little bit and the pandemic made us stop and all of a sudden rethink and regrasp ourselves and really um, like shook us to the ground to say like okay what are we made of is this real like is what we're saying it's real we got it and with that, I'm going to leave you. He got it. And here's a video. Thank you. Kavita, can you give me a thumbs up if the screen is sharing? Awesome. There we go. Thank you. 
Se comida no es curry. No, curry was a white supremacist lie. Igual que en México hay más que mole. Hay una miles de variedades de moles y pipianes. What happens when you use one term to describe the gastronomy of such a massively diverse country is you're erasing the histories, the regionality, and the history culture. behind the recipes, the cultures behind the recipes. And it's really, really fucked up. Me llamo Sergio Cabanes, nací en California. Mi familia son de África del Este. Son indios que emigraron a Kenia y Etiopía hace mucho tiempo. Mm. Me mudé aquí hace cinco años a México para, para abrir ese proyecto con Norma, para abrir más al de maíz. De este lado y tres de este lado. Sí, total. Seis total. Ya tienes un siete, entonces ahora vamos a medir. Yo soy Norma Listman, soy mexicana de Texcoco y viví 18 años en el área de la bahía, ahí fue donde nos conocimos. Masala y Maíz es este proyecto de nosotros dos en el que queremos explorar los puntos de encuentro entre las comidas de África del Este, específicamente Kenia, Etiopía, India y México. No somos fusión. Fusión es un término meramente capitalista del norte global que surgió en los 80. Son gastronomías mestizas que han tenido un ir y venir de ingredientes a través de nuestra historia. Regresé a México porque quería estar más cerca de el maíz y más cerca de mi cultura. Según yo iba a abrir una tortillería, pero pues llegó la oportunidad de abrir más sala y maíz. Todos ganamos lo mismo. Seas losa, seas cocinero, ganamos lo mismo. En otros lugares son por posiciones. Ya saben que la clasificación de cocinero de acuerdo a, la, a tu experiencia es cocinero A, cocinero B, subchef, eh, chef de partida. Estuve seis meses trabajando en el hospital de cancerología en la noche y bueno, a medios días aquí en el restaurante. Y me decidí quedar aquí en Mata de Maíz. O sea, la verdad es que nos va súper bien. Es algo que, por ejemplo, a mí en lo personal, pues sí me marcó y hizo diferencia en mi vida porque de trabajar de limpieza con un sueldo a la quincena de, de 1,800, 2,000 pesos a la quincena, pues aquí, aquí me va súper mejor y a la semana. Right before we were supposed to open Masale Mai, the city got devastated in this massive earthquake. So we're going to be, we're doing 800 free meals every day. But, see, to different disaster sites. And then somebody tried to extort us for a bribe from a government agency. And we, we didn't pay the bribe and we got shut down for six months. And that for us was like, okay, we're going to be very rigid in this. Una vez que abres esa puerta, ya vas a seguir pagando mordidas, mordidas, porque no hay, no hay detrás. Y vimos qué tan fuerte es el nivel de uh, corrupción, el nivel de uh, bureaucracy. Los trabajos estresantes <laughs> son mi pasión. Creo que he llegado a una etapa en mi vida ahora en la que estoy titulándome de psicología, estoy terminando esa, esa etapa de mi vida. Pues, sin embargo, Estoy seguro que esto es lo que me gusta. Estoy seguro que esto me quiero dedicar. Creo que lo, de los sueldos más gratificantes es cuando una persona dice que tú le brindas la mejor experiencia de, tu, de sus vidas o en la Ciudad de México, por lo menos. Todo el día estamos aprendiendo algo y cuando escucho eso también me siento muy satisfecho con lo que estoy haciendo actualmente en mi vida. Yo, no, uh, the thing is that we don't open for dinner because the chefs want us to have a life after, after working. <laughs> yeah. We can go have dinner or be, be with our family. Yeah, yeah. Tenemos nosotros una práctica de transparencia radical en la que siempre compartimos toda nuestra información de todo tipo con nuestro equipo, específicamente financiera. Estas son las ventas del 28 de septiembre al 3 de octubre. Pues en este momento estamos trabajando en un modelo que se llama liderazgo colectivo. So we're not dictating what the day-to-day -day life is as the owners. So we're supporting our team and just constantly trying to get to a more just model. 
la industria en México sí es súper explotadora, es llena de machismo, pese a que las mujeres cocinamos en nuestras casas, que mm, damos alimentos a nuestros hijos y todo eso, pero de, a nivel profesional es de hombre. El simple hecho de ser mujer, eh, tienes que dar el doble, ¿sabes? creo que tienes siempre que dar el doble para poder eh, sobresalir y para que tu trabajo sea, sea visto, porque eh, pues vivimos en un mundo patriarcal en el que los puestos, los mejores puestos siempre son eh, para hombres o siempre el hombre tiene que ser el líder. Lo que estamos pidiendo a ustedes es que ustedes encargan de cómo quieren como poner en práctica esta decisión, cuándo, cómo, pero que hacen trabajo en equipo. Entonces ustedes ven que necesitan para que lograr eso de una manera que se sienten que están cuidando tu equipo. Ustedes pongan fecha y pues... The restaurant industry has spent so much time following this very hierarchical model based off the French military that's really rooted in white supremacy, really rooted in capitalism and patriarchy. This idea of the infallible chef, which is always a man, predominantly white, predominantly from Europe, and, and mm -hmm. it's this, this visionary genius. It's not how restaurants work. Yeah, no, cooking is a collective project and it's constant, like we're constantly working amongst each other to push ourselves to be better or to support each other better. Si alguien quiere aprender a hacer algo como fuera de su área, que lo pueda hacer, por ejemplo, Catalina, nuestra directora culinaria, quiere abrir su restaurante. Carla quiere ser agricultora, se quiere ir a trabajar al campo. Entonces, para mí es una transición natural. Yo estoy acostumbrada a un pueblo pequeño, todos los días lo extraño, todos los días me quiero regresar, pero pues también me gusta mucho estar aquí en, eh, en el restaurante. A mí me da gusto cuando está lleno, ¿no? Porque eso habla de que el trabajo que está haciendo todo como el colectivo está súper padre y que también creo que a final de cuentas dos personas iniciaron con esto, pero pues la promesa de todos los que trabajamos aquí es lo que hace que esté funcionando. Reading the history of labor law in Mexico, the history of worker rights organizing, farm worker rebellion, and if we can continue down this path of workers first, workers first, workers first, then we'll have a strong business. Mm -hmm. Ya no estoy de acuerdo con que sea normal que la industria restaurantera sea, pues sea explotación y sea difícil. Ya, ya no. Ya cambié el chip. No soy de hablar inglés porque traigo ahí unas ideas medio radicales de... Porque yo en mi país tengo que estar eh, hablando otro idioma. Porque ellos no hacen un esfuerzo ¿no? por hablar... Eh, el español si bien de visita o por lo menos lo básico. Yo cuando entré estaba como en, casi en cero y ahorita ya me puedo aventar a dar explicaciones de platillos, presentar platos y demás en, en inglés. Y pues también los chefs nos acaban de, de poner a un profesor o sea, para todo el equipo. Entonces eso también está bien chido. We can keep your luggage in here. There's this reality where South Asian food and Mexican food are not valued and they're not held up as food that's worth paying for, not food that's for a special occasion. It's, it's very deeply racialized in the way the foods our communities are consumed. And I think it's really important to distinguish between genuine tourism where people come to learn and to experience culture. And then we have this type of neo-colonial tourism. I'm visiting your country, but I'm not going to learn your language. I'm visiting your country, but I'm not going to interact with your culture. It's like this is this colonial mentality where you can just exotify and take from it without being accountable to your impact. I just say the Catepe. Orgullosamente, como todo eh, poblador del Estado de México, tengo que venir eh, a la ciudad a, a buscar empleo, porque aquí es donde hay mucho más empleo. Eh, casi siempre me hago hora y media, dos horas. Yeah. We benefit from, and our staff benefits from this wave of tourism that's happening. It's a double-edged sword with what it does to the restaurant industry here and for the hospitality industry. We have staff that 
they need hours to get here and hours to get back home because they can't afford to live in the city because the cost of living in the city has gone up so high that it becomes like Disneyland, right? Soy la balosa. Eh, a veces entramos en la mañana, a veces entramos de dos a diez. A mí me gusta mucho lo que hacen aquí cuando trabajan en la mesa y todo eso. Eso me llama mucho la atención. Ahorita estoy en el horario de, de la mañana de siete a tres. Mi tarea es este, lavar la, la verdura, la losa, este, trapear las salas de arriba. Y pues me hago como una hora y cuarto cuando hay tráfico o... O el metro está atascado, me hago hora y media. Y uso el tren ligero, después el metro, y después el, el metrobús porque están reparando el metro, entonces. We're here because we love Mexico City, because we want to learn from this culture, but that's got to be a two-way street. Learn fucking Spanish when you come to Mexico. Don't <laughs> buy into 50 Bass, don't buy into Michelin. Fuck all of those lists. There's better food out there. La comida para mí es todo, es política, es arte, es sueños, es sustento. Que la comida siga pareciendo interesante, divertida, relevante, pero que esto vaya de la mano con el crecimiento. En el restaurante me encantaría tener un sistema de guardería para las mamás y papás, eh, que los chavos puedan tener otra cooperativa que les permita tener otro ingreso. I think it's useless to think of a restaurant as a money-making thing, but this is going to make us rich. No, that's not the point of Masale Maiz. Masale Maiz is everyone that works there. We want the business to be strong enough and that we can all work together in a more dignified way and treat them as the professionals that they are. That's key to the food tasting, but that's key for the restaurant to be successful. Thank you so much, uh, Thank everyone. Thank you for having us. I know we were at our- uh, So radical. You are so radical. It's fantastic. Thank you. So <laughs> Thank much. you. Thank really you. a new approach. Um, I'm going to put our emails here, our personal emails. And yeah. I'm also going to put uh, our Instagram, which is the best way to keep in touch with us. And we look forward to any questions you have um, or any way you want to stay in touch. Um, but yeah, email will be the best way to get a hold of us. And let's keep dreaming together. There really is a lot of possibility for us to change the food system, the way we treat craft, the way we treat culture, and how we work in community. And the only way we do that is to put workers first and communities first. And to do it together. Thank you so much, everyone. Gracias, Carla. Gracias. Muchas gracias.